All right, uh, let's dive into this paper, Agent Laboratory, using LLM agents as research assistants. It's about this new AI framework designed to help us human researchers, specifically in machine learning. Yeah, the core idea is pretty fascinating. Imagine having a whole team of AI assistants working tirelessly right alongside you, sifting through papers, designing experiments, analyzing data, even helping write the reports. That's the promise of Agent Laboratory. Okay, I'm intrigued, but also maybe a little intimidated. Is this like a robot takeover of academia? Not quite. What's really interesting is that it's designed for both fully autonomous AI operation and a co-pilot mode. So you, the human researcher, can give feedback at every step. Phew. That's a relief. So it's more like giving researchers superpowers than replacing them. Yeah. How does this whole agent laboratory actually work? It leverages those LLMs we keep hearing about large language models. Okay. But here's the twist. They've created different agents, each with a specific role, almost like a real research team. You've got the PhD student agent, the postdoc, the ML engineer, even a professor agent. Wait, they actually named the AI agents after real research roles? Yes. It seems a bit whimsical, but it makes the concept more relatable. You immediately grasp how the tasks are divided within the system. Okay, I'm picturing this virtual team of AI researchers huddled around a virtual whiteboard. But let's break this down. How does this play out in a real research project? What's the first step? Let's say you have a research question. The first stage is the literature review. The PhD student agent tackles this. It connects to the Archive API to find and summarize relevant research. So it's not just Googling stuff. It's going straight to the source, like yeah. a real grad student spending hours in the library. But how does it know which papers are actually relevant? Keyword searches can be so unreliable. That's where it gets interesting. It goes beyond simple keyword matching using semantic similarity. It's designed to understand the meaning and context of your research question and find connections that a basic keyword search might miss. It's like having a research librarian who not only knows where all the books are, but actually understands your research area. That's pretty powerful. It is. And the paper highlights some interesting findings about which LLMs were most effective for this task. For example, the O1 preview model was considered the most useful by human evaluators. But surprisingly, O1 Mini, a smaller model, actually produced higher quality experiments. Hold on, smaller is a better in this case. I thought bigger models were always more powerful. What's going on there? That's a question the researchers are exploring. It could be that smaller models are less prone to overfitting the data, or maybe they're better at capturing the essence of the research problem without getting bogged down in complexity. So it's not just about raw processing power. It's about finding the right tool for the job. It's like saying a seasoned professor might have more knowledge, but a first-year grad student might come up with more innovative experimental designs. That's a great analogy and it highlights the need to carefully evaluate different LLMs. We can't simply assume the most advanced model will be the best fit for every research task. But to answer your question about the process, after this AI-powered lit review, the PhD student and postdoc agents move on to formulating a research plan. This is where they virtually brainstorm integrating the relevant literature with your overall research goal. Okay, so the AI has done its homework, reading all the papers, and even coming up with a research plan. But how do we go from a plan to actually doing the experiments? Is there a tiny robot scientist hiding in a server rack somewhere mixing chemicals? That would be quite a sight. No, this is where the ML engineer agent comes in. It's responsible for writing the code for the experiments, drawing on those massive data sets like the ones from Hugging Face. Wait, the AI is writing code now? That seems like a huge leap. How do we know it's writing good code and not something that'll crash the entire system? The researchers address that ensuring code quality is crucial, so they've built in mechanisms to test and refine the code generated by the ML engineer agent. It's almost like having a super-powered code reviewer checking for errors and suggesting improvements. Okay, that makes me feel a little better. So we've got the literature review, the research plan, the code. Uh, are we ready to hit go on the experiment? Almost. Remember that co-pilot mode. This is where you, the human researcher, come in. You have the opportunity to review and refine each step. The AI is essentially providing a really informed starting point, not dictating the entire research direction. That's a good reminder that this is about augmenting human capabilities, not replacing them. We're still steering the ship. But let's say we've reviewed the AI's work, made any necessary tweaks, and the experiment runs smoothly. What happens next? Then it's time to make sense of the results. The PhD student and postdoc agents team up again to analyze the data, looking for patterns and insights that address the original research question. Okay, so they're crunching the numbers and looking for those aha moments. 
But I'm guessing this is where human expertise is still absolutely essential, right? Absolutely. The AI can process data and identify trends, but it's the human researcher who brings the deeper understanding of the field. Connecting the dots, drawing meaningful conclusions, and placing the findings within the broader context of existing research. Right. The AI might notice a correlation, but it's the human who can say, hey, this might be because of X, Y, or Z based on what we already know. Exactly. And this leads us to the final stage writing the research report. Ah, uh, yes, the part that every researcher loves so much. Does the AI magically generate a perfectly formatted manuscript? I'd happily hand over that task. Well, it's not magic. All right, uh, let's dive into this paper, Agent Laboratory, using LLM agents as research assistants. It's about this new AI framework designed to help our human researchers, specifically in machine learning. Yeah, the four idea is pretty fascinating. Imagine having a whole team of AI assistants. Hey there, want to share your thoughts on this? Hey there, thanks for having me. So what role are you in this podcast? Well, hey there to you too. It's great to have you with us. Absolutely. We're happy you're joining in. It's more fun with you. Hey, yeah, what's up? So what's, what role are you in this podcast? And uh, can we come up with some research ideas? Well, that's a great question. I'm your host, and I'm here to unpack all the interesting bits of this paper for us. And I'm here to add some expertise, connecting the dots and explaining why it all matters. And yes, we'd absolutely love to brainstorm some research ideas with you. Let's get to that. But first, let's set the scene a little more. Okay, so picture this. A team of AI researchers. Yeah, like a virtual lab all collaborating on a research project. So how does this play out in a real research project? What's the first step? The very first stage in Agent Laboratory is the literature review, which the PhD student agent handles. So it's like this AI grad student is doing all the work. Exactly. It's using the ArcSieV API to find and summarize relevant research papers. So it's not just a simple keyword search then, right? Nope. It understands the meaning of your question, not just keywords. Okay, that's way more advanced than just Googling for papers. It's like having a super librarian who also knows what you're working on. That's pretty powerful. I could see why it's so useful. And they even found that the O1 preview model was considered most useful by human evaluators. Wait, really? So the big model was the best? Actually, no. The smaller O1 mini model produced higher quality experiments. Hold on, how can a smaller model be better? It's something the researchers are exploring. Maybe smaller models avoid overfitting. So it's not about the biggest model, it's about the best model for the job. Exactly, and it highlights the need to test different models. If we connect this to the bigger picture, it's about accelerating scientific discovery. Exactly, they are trying to reduce costs and improve the quality of research. This raises an important question. How does it all work? Well, it starts with a human providing a research idea, that's you. Then it goes through three stages, literature review, experimentation, and report writing. And all of that is done by these autonomous LLM-based agents. Okay, makes sense. But what happens after the literature review? The PhD student and postdoc agents make a plan. So the AI makes a plan based on all the research it found? Yep. They integrate the literature with the overall goal. Okay, so the AI has a plan, but how do we actually do experiments? That's where the ML engineer agent writes the code using massive data sets. We're talking about large language models, the kind that power things like ChatGPT. Here's where it gets really interesting. The system outputs a code repository and a research report. And it also allows for human feedback at each stage, if you want to chime in. So what does this all mean? It means scientists can focus on the creative stuff. Yes, like coming up with new ideas instead of just coding and writing. It's meant to be a co-pilot, which is pretty amazing if you think about it. That's right. It's designed to assist, not replace, human researchers in their work. They found that the O1 preview model created the best research outcomes. 
and the machine learning code was able to achieve state-of-the-art performance. But get this, human involvement improved the quality of the research significantly. And perhaps most importantly, it reduces research expenses by 84%. So it's faster, cheaper, and more efficient. Sounds like a win-win. The AI writes the code now, that's a huge leap. Yes, and there are built-in ways to check and improve the code it writes. Okay, that makes me feel a bit better about it. It's like having a code reviewer that finds errors and makes improvements. Okay, we've got the lit review, the plan, the code. Are we ready for research ideas? Almost. There's also a co-pilot mode where you, the human, can review. And that's the part where we can get you involved with all your awesome research ideas. We'll come back to that in a moment, but let's just touch on the co-pilot mode. So just to recap, this framework uses LLMs to perform research. Right, it's like a virtual team working on a research project. And it's designed to assist, not replace human researchers. And it has different agents that do things, like the ML engineer and postdoc. Okay, I think we've covered the basics. Now, on to those research ideas. Before we dive into brainstorming, do you have any thoughts on what kinds of research questions we can explore? This is where it gets really interesting. Let us know what you're thinking. Okay, this sounds like a good place to wrap it up for today. Thanks for joining us on a deep dive into Agent Laboratory. Uh, yep, go on. Hmm, can we come up with some research ideas? Oh, absolutely. We are so glad you're excited to brainstorm with us. Yes, that's a fantastic idea. We'd love to hear your thoughts. In fact, that's exactly where we were heading with this whole co-pilot mode. That's right. The Agent Laboratory is all about collaboration between humans and AI. We have a bunch of things to say about it, but that can wait. We can skip some of that and jump straight into ideation. So let's think about what kind of research questions would be interesting. Well, first we can think about how the agent lab handled experiments and research. Okay, so for example, the system found that the O1 preview model was the best for research. While the O1 mini was better for experiments, but they don't know why. Maybe we could explore what makes a good model for research versus experiment. That's a great starting point. Or maybe we can think about the limitations of the system. Yeah, it's not perfect. The researchers noted a few shortcomings in their paper. For one, human co-pilots rated the report usefulness and experiment quality lower. Right, they had difficulty guiding the agents to execute their vision. So maybe that's something we can try to address. How can we improve the human interface? We could also explore ways to make the AI more adaptable to human goals. Yes, and think about how we can incorporate more human feedback. Perhaps by making the agents work more like an actual research team. Where everyone has their own strengths and ways of contributing. So not just a PhD student, but a collaborative system of diverse researchers. And perhaps we can think about what it is that makes a research idea novel. Because the paper pointed out that LLMs can struggle with true novelty in ideas. Maybe we can explore different prompts to see how they change the output. Or we can think about the ethical questions it brings up, too. Absolutely. There are definitely implications to using LLMs for research. For example, how do we ensure the research isn't biased or unethical? Or how can we make sure everyone has access to these powerful tools? So many avenues for research open up when we consider this. This system is about augmenting human research capabilities with AI. And there's a lot of room to explore how that augment. Oh, yeah. Go on. For example, can we bring up some mathematical ideas? Well, that's a fantastic idea. I'm totally on board with bringing in some math. Yes, let's definitely explore the mathematical side of this. It's where a lot of the interesting details lie. Okay, so the paper doesn't go in deep into specific math equations, but we can talk about where they're relevant. Absolutely. We can think about the kinds of math used in machine learning models, which is at the core of this. Right. So the agents are built on large language models, which use a lot of probability and statistics. Specifically, they use autoregressive models, which are all about predicting token sequences based on learned probabilities. Okay, let's unpack this so it's like the LLM is always guessing what word comes next. Precisely. And that process involves some complex math using techniques like softmax and transformers. Transformers, I've heard that word before. Is that like a matrix multiplication thing? You're on the right track. They capture long-range dependencies in the text, which is vital for context. That's where the real power of these language models comes from. And it's all powered by complex math equations at the end of the day. And those equations let it learn from... Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. So can they, uh, if they not, do not use the softmax-based model um, and remove the softmax? Okay, that's a really interesting question. It sounds like you're thinking about 
alternatives to softmax. Yeah, that's a great point. We could definitely explore that idea of not using a softmax-based model. So to unpack this, softmax is that function that turns raw outputs into probabilities. Right, it essentially assigned probabilities to each possible word, and the word with the highest probability is selected. And it sounds like you're asking if we could skip that max step and maybe do something else. What's fascinating is that the core of the LLMs is that prediction of probabilities, and that uses the softmax. So we need to think how to do that without softmax and still make it work. Perhaps we can explore different ways to sample from the probabilities without the max selection. This could be a fascinating area to dig deeper into, especially the math behind alternative selection methods. Maybe this could help with the bias mitigation strategies, which we were about to talk about. You are right. The agents use majority voting, which would be affected if you change softmax. And they also use entropy-based threat holding, which might also be impacted. Now that's a concept we should dive into more, especially how math is used to deal with bias, which you brought up. We can think about how they quantify bias and how those thresholds would be affected. It's really interesting to see how these abstract mathematical concepts are used practically. The paper also mentions that the system uses the ArcSieV API to search and summarize research papers. I bet there's some math behind that too, like using those vector embeddings we talked about. Yes, those embeddings would change without softmax, and it would affect how the system calculates semantic similarity. I think that's a great starting point to come up with some mathematical research ideas. Before we move to that, let's just quickly talk about how they evaluate the performance of the models. The models were scored on different metrics, which would all be impacted by this change. And the system uses a self-reflection process that also uses math, and those could change too. It's all about the underlying algorithms and the math that makes the agent tick, as you pointed out. So now that we've touched on some of that math, where do you want to go next with this idea? Maybe we can combine this new no softmax method with the ethical concerns that we talked about earlier. Yes, and perhaps we can come up with research ideas on how to better quantify bias in a non-softmax model. That's a great idea. It touches on both the ethical and the mathematical ideas you presented. It's fascinating to see how a single change like that could influence the math. And that new math, in turn, helps it come up with new experiments, code, and research reports. So we've covered the basics of this system and touched on how math is a essential, especially non-softmax models. And there's a lot of room to explore how those mathematical foundations could be improved without softmax. Okay, I think we've set the stage for some very interesting research questions. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into Agent Laboratory and your fantastic mathematical insights. And we hope you enjoyed our conversation that combined mathematical and ethical considerations with a fun twist on softmax. Oh, go for it. Thank you for your explanation. Ah, oh, well, thank you so much. It's great to know that we're explaining things clearly. Yes, we really appreciate that feedback. It helps us know we're on the right track. And it's very helpful for us, too, since we're still trying to figure out the best.